someone someone taught me the difference of how uh, to ask an effective question, right? Let's let's make this really real right now. Um, I've got two kids. Maybe some of your audiences do, right? Let's what, use what, what are their ages? Ten and twelve. Oh, so okay. Abner and Alex. I'll use them as a lens. The most open question I can ask is going to give me a terrible answer, which is, Avner, how was your day, right? It's so open that he doesn't know where to latch onto, and so it's going to get you a very bad response. A closed question, which I could ask my daughter was, Alex, how was science today? Why is that terrible? Giving her a binary out, good or bad, right? So how was your day or how was science today? It's just too open a question or too closed of a question. A great question would be, you know, kids, or just I'll speak to my son in this one, Avner, you know, tell me, tell me the top three things you learned in earth science today and, and why would you rank it that way? And by asking rank and why, I'm forcing him to give me three answers. I'm forcing him to put thought into ranking and I'm essentially getting the answer code. Now, let me, let me apply that to 360i in an advertising agency. We show a client three pieces of work, right? Three concepts for the Game of Thrones launch. Instead, the, the worst open question was, how, did you, how do you like that? How did it go? Who cares? That's a terrible question. A great question would be, of those three ideas, tell me, how would you rank them? Why would you rank them there? And what would be the specific things you would change on each? Now I can take that feedback back to the creative team and actually do something with it. People ask recklessly wasteful questions and they think they're geniuses. I call them beard another scratchers. Soundbite, another soundbite. Did you catch that, Isaac? Another Be great sound. Whole pot. Make a little note of that. That's specific and diligent in your questions. So be an active listener, be an active questioner. But I think you're right. I love the idea of rec reckless and wasteful. Reckless and wasteful questions. I love it because you're so, it's so true. And on the flip of that, yeah. if you just put a little thought into it. A little. A, a, a little. And, and actually, some questions you can use always. Sure. So whenever I'm doing, sure. let's say, I've been hired for a new engagement. Yep. Okay. One of the questions I will always ask on that first call yeah. is I'll say, okay, so, so let's say it's a workshop or yeah. speaking engagement, right? So now I'm going to be with a group of people and they want me to teach them soft skills. One of my favorites recently is they said, you know, we've got this group of people come in, they need executive presence, okay. spend three hours with them and give them executive presence. It's a tall order, man. <laughs> <laughs> tall order. So, and they also said executive presence, right? Yeah. Well, you and I are both thinking, oh yeah, we know what that means. Do we know what that means? What exactly does that mean? Yeah. So one of my questions I always ask, and I would encourage all the listeners to use some version of this. I say, all right, so let's say we finish the session. Yeah. We're walking out of the room and we say to ourselves, oh my gosh, that was a big success. What would you have wanted to come out of that? That's what would you have wanted to either see or feel or notice? That's a great question. You're forcing specifics and you're forcing follow-up and you're getting the answer. It's never too late to change your life. So